Many of us think that Islam is just a religion to secure our Akhirah. And they don't think that Islam is a comprehensive way of life that aims to bring all types of benefits for the entire humanity and to deter and protect them from any type of evil <coughs> action. Islam aims to bring any type of benefit for the entire humanity, whether in the dunya or in the akhirah. And Islam also aims to protect them against any evil, any evil action or any evil <coughs> practice. This is Islam. And the ultimate success, of course, is the success in the Akhirah. Once we submit to Allah and worship no one but Him. However, that doesn't mean that Muslims live in this life as failing people. Let me repeat that again. It doesn't mean that we live in this dunya on the margin. Not as a leading nation. Not as the most successful individuals and the most successful nation. It doesn't mean that. In fact, this is a very unique concept. Please pay attention to it. The real success in the Akhirah is connected to the success in the dunya. If you are successful in the dunya, you will be successful in the Akhirah if you understand the true meaning of success. This concept that we are living for the Akhirah, we don't care about the dunya, is wrong. Is totally wrong. Now, someone might say, how come? Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى فَلَنُحِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَنَنَجِزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرًا بِأَحْسَنِ الَّذِي كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Whoever does any good deeds in this dunya, male or female, we will provide them with haya tayyibah, the successful life. And in the akhirah, we will reward them with the best reward. Allah also says in the Quran, you see this concept mentioned in the Quran throughout, in different ways. <coughs> In the Quran, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, قَالَ هَبِطَ مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَىٰ فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَىٰيَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَىٰ وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَىٰ قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَىٰ وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتِي فَنَسِيتَ فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَىٰ Allah wa Allah. We read Quran little and if we read Quran we don't contemplate on what we read. That's why I will urge you, my dear brothers and sisters, to learn Arabic language. Inshallah, one time we will talk about the importance of Arabic language. In this, in these verses, Allah Jalla Ala says, whoever turns away from my remembrance, my guidance, he will live a miserable life. This life will be a life of misery 
for him or her. And then on the day of resurrection, he will be resurrected as a blind person. He or she will ask, why are we resurrected as blind people? And the answer will come to them, because in the dunya, you acted as blind people towards my instructions. And therefore, we resurrect you, we reward you with what you used to do as a blind person, and you will be punished. Which means that those who are following the guidance of Allah Jalla Ala, will be successful in the dunya and in the akhirah. Those who turn away from the guidance of Allah Jalla Ala, will be failing in the dunya and in the akhirah. In fact, one of the very amazing verses, actually two verses in the Quran, was mentioned. Musa alayhi salam once said, رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ In another verse, رَبَّنَا لَا تَجْعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Oh Allah, don't make us a fitna for the disbelievers or the wrongdoers. The scholar said in this, please listen to this. This is a very important concept, my dear brothers and sisters. Oh Allah, don't make us weak. <coughs> and don't make them, means the disbelievers, strong. In a way that they overpower us. When they overpower us, they will ask themselves, why did we overpower those people? They will say, yeah, because they are following the wrong. They are following the wrong religion. And therefore, why do we need to consider their religion? Why do we need to look at their religion? Why do we need to accept their religion? No, our religion is better than the religion of those people because they are weak, because they are following the wrong religion. And as a result of this, because of our weakness, and because of our weakness in this dunya, because of our failure in this dunya, we became what? We became a hindrance. We became a fitna. We stopped people from accepting Islam. Because they would say, oh, if I become Muslim, I will become what? As those poor people, those <coughs> failing people, I don't want to become like that. Brothers and sisters, this is a very, very important concept. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, the Muslim Ummah throughout history was not a failing Ummah. All other nations used to look up to us. They want to be like us. It has never been in the history like this. Since the destruction of the Khilafah, 1924, for 13, 40, 40, uh, 13, uh, 45, I think, Hijran. Since the destruction of the Khilafah, what happened? We became very weak very weak as an ummah and as a result of this other nations they are they don't look up to us because by nature people look up to successful people successful nations they don't look up to failing individuals or failing nations throughout history we were the most successful people we built the greatest civilization known to mankind. When the Prophet ﷺ was sent 1443 years ago, he built a very strong nation. Within the first 40 years of Islam, Muslims managed to demolish the main two superpowers at that time the Persians and the Romans. They demolished them not because of anger and of rage and hate and no, because those people came to a level of arrogance and committing injustice. <laughs> that, because the superpower, unless the superpower feels that there is a superior power above it, they will commit injustice and kill him. And this is what was happening by 
this was uh, done by the Persians and the Romans. So the Muslim nation came to put an end to that. Within just 40 years of the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, even with, before that, Qadisiyah battle took place during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, and then they removed place, took again place in the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab. This ended the Persian Empire, and this ended the Roman Empire. Allahu Akbar. And then even some dispute took place between the companions that doesn't, that did not make the Muslim Ummah as a failing nation. No, they continued. So the Umayyan period came, and subhanallah, it have opened countries to the mercy of Islam, and it had a control over an area, some historians said, that it was the biggest known in history. Some others dispute that, but without a shadow of a doubt, they controlled an area that is one of the biggest areas for to be controlled by any dying city. <coughs> the Umayyad period. Within less than 100 years of the birth of the Prophet of Allah. Even when the Umayyad period came to an end, 132 of Hijrah, it was followed by the Abbasi period. The Abbasi period continued to be a successful nation and the main superpower or one of the main superpowers in the world. And Harun al-Rashid, rahimahullah, this caliph who used to one time, one year go for jihad and one year go for hajj. He said, he looked once at the clouds and he said, wherever you are going to reign, the outcome of that rain will come to me as the caliph of Muslims because I, all, I control almost most of the universe at that time. Subhanallah. These are our ancestors, brothers. We have never been a failing ummah. Then the Abbas Khilafah was destroyed in 656. Within 50 years, although the Abbas Khilafah was destroyed, yet the Muslim Ummah did not fail as an Ummah. And it rebuilt itself. It rebuilt itself, and the Ottoman Empire took place. And again, it ruled most of the Middle East, many areas of Europe, many areas of Asia, so huge for over 600 years. The British kings used to send their daughters to the Ottoman caliphs for education. And they used to beg them to provide protection for their ladies. This is who we are. And this is this is our legacy. This is our history. We have never been a failing nation. We have been always a successful ummah. And, subhanallah, success, my dear respected brothers and sisters, should be running in our blood. A Muslim doesn't walk while his head is down. The Muslim walks and his head is up. When the Muslims were defeated in the battle of Uhud, Allah Jalla addressed them. He said, Wala tahinu wala tahzanu wa antum al a'launa in kuntum mu'mineen. He says, kum qarhun. So what if you were defeated? This is just, this is just by the way. And 
The Muslim nation is always looking up for success. They fall. If they fall, they will continue. And they will never accept to, fee, to be a failing nation. We need to live, my dear respected brothers and sisters, by this spirit. And the mothers need to feed the need of success, the urge of success, the love for success, and the love to excel. They need to feed this to their children once they breastfeed them. And you need to instill that in the minds and hearts of everyone and including your children. And my dear respected brothers and sisters, this is how Allah Jalla wants us. And my dear brothers and sisters, Wallahi, if you look at our great leader, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, without a shadow of a doubt, he was the most successful individual. Even non-Muslims testified to that. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that humble person, <coughs> the companion said, if you visit us and the Prophet sallam, is within us, you don't know who he is because he was so humble. Yet, he says, Ana Sayyidu Waladi Adam, Wala Fakhr. He said, I am the best of mankind. But I'm not saying this out of pride or arrogance. Subhanallah. Because he wants to instill this in the minds and hearts of his people. He wants to instill this in our minds and hearts. He wants us to live by that spirit, my dear brothers and sisters. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله بعثه الله رحمة للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين If we read my dear respected brothers and sisters سورة الفاتحة We see that سورة الفاتحة wants us to be the most distinguished ummah الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين This is very empowering And then اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين We are on the straight path And the straight path is the shortest path to success in the dunya and in the Akhirah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, look how Quran instills this in ourselves, in our blood, in our psyche. We are people of success. We are not people of failure. Alif Lam Mim Thalika Al-Kitab La Rayba Fihi Hudan Lil Muttaqin. Even my dear brothers and sisters, even the language of the Quran, that's why it is so important to understand Arabic. The language of the Quran is empowering, is not a language of weakness. Look, even in the beginning, Alif Lam Mim Dharik Al Kitab, a challenge. La Rayba Fi. This book, there is no doubt in it whatsoever. Anyone who writes any book, he will say, Well, I have written this book, I tried my best, and please forgive me if. Send me any comment, any. But this book is a, from the beginning a book of a challenge. This book is correct. No, it is the highest level of authenticity and correctness. There is no doubt in it whatsoever. 
bring it. <coughs> Subhanallah. If you have any doubt, bring it. Put it forward. You cannot. قُلْ لَعِنِ اِتَمَعَكِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا And in that, Allah Jalla wa Ala, in that page, in the very first few verses of the Qur'an, of Surah Al-Baqarah, أَلِفْ لَامْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ All of it is talking about success, هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Guidance for the believers. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةُ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُ مِنْ فِقُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَى هُدًا مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ We want you to be successful. قَدْ عَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The first verse in Surah Al-Mu'minun, the first description of the believers is what? قَدْ عَفْلَحُ They are successful. In the surah that we read every Jum'ah, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلْحَ And look at our Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم. There is no field in this life except he was the best صلى الله عليه وسلم. As a politician, he was the best. As a social worker, he was the best. As an economist, he was the best. Sallallahu alayhi wa And he wants us to be the best. <coughs> and on the day of resurrection, when all people, they are looking forward for solution, for the day of resurrection, for the accountability to start, they will go to Adam. He will decline. He will say, go to Noor, they will go to Noor, he will decline. Go to Musa, he will decline. Go to Isa, he will decline. Go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he will say, Ana laha. I am the one who is going to do it. If your prophet, if your leader is that leader, that should not put your head down. And that should inspire you to be a distinguished in excelling, excelling individual. And then the entire Ummah will be the excelling Ummah as Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhridat lil nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna anil munkar You were the best nation ever raised to mankind enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. We ask Allah Jalla wa Ala to make us like this as He wanted us. And we ask Allah Jalla wa Ala to help us to be the most successful individuals and the most successful ummah. And we ask Allah Jalla to pardon us for our mistakes and our shortcomings. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana kullaha diqqaha wa jillaha ma alimna minha wa ma alam na'alam. Allahumma ya hayu ya qayyum ya badi as-samawati wal ard. Allahumma inna nas'aluka fi hadhi al-sa'ati al-mubaraka. Allahumma inna nas'aluka. أن اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عادله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عادله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيد الخلق وإمام المرسلين محمد بن عبد الله My dear brothers and sisters increase in this day of جمعة the best of your days increase sending salah and salam upon our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa qumu ila salatikum ya alhamdulillah خصك الرحمن بالفضل والتجان والروح والريحان يا حامل القرآن قد خصك الرحمن بالفضل والتجان